The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Hey, what is up, YouTube fam? It's Dupree, aka Dar Hater here with some fresh Star Wars news. Uh, not necessarily any good news. Bear with me with this. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe because that greatly helps out the channel. So, this one's about George Lucas's ex-wife, Maria Lucas, bashing the sequel trilogy. And yeah, this one's gonna be interesting. This one comes from comicbookmovie.com. Uh, so what it says right here, let's start. J.W. Rinser's new book, Howard Kazanjian, A Producer's Life has just been released and it features insights from veteran editor Marcia Lucas, George Lucas's ex-wife. She made a name for herself working on movies like Taxi Driver, American Graffiti, the later would earn an Oscar nomination and later won an Oscar for A, a New Hope. If you guys didn't know, she actually edited A uh, New Hope and kind of turned that movie into what it was because um, apparently from, um, from what I remember reading articles and watching interviews, George Lucas wasn't really a good editor. Um, and he was so stressed out with Star Wars that he needed, you know, he brought his wife into like you know, in the editing room with him to finish the movie. Um, also working on Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, it's fair to say Lucas knows her way around that galaxy far, far away. Despite praising current Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy as a wonderful woman who is really smart and really bright, she's not a fan of direction the Star Wars sequels took that kind of iconic franchise. Now she's running Lucasfilm and making movies, it seems to me that Kathy and Kennedy and J.J. Abrams don't have a clue about Star Wars. They don't get it. Lucas stated, and J.J. Abrams is writing stories. When I saw the movie where they kill Han Solo, I was furious. I was furious when they killed Han Solo. Absolutely, positively, there was no rhyme or reason to it. I thought, you don't get the Jedi story. You don't get the magic of Star Wars. Getting rid of Han Solo, and then at the end of this last one, The Last Jedi, they have Luke disintegrate. They kill Han Solo, they kill Luke Skywalker, they don't have Princess Leia anymore. They're spitting out movies every year. Dang. <laughs> she just... Oof. Lucas went to make it clear that she wasn't on board with race portrayal as a seemingly all-powerful Jedi. They think it's important to appeal to a woman's audience to show their main character is this female supposed to have Jedi powers, but we don't know how she got Jedi powers or who she is. It sucks. The storylines are terrible, just terrible, awful. You can quote me. Damn. It's one thing for Star Wars fans to tear into the movies, but the Academy Award winning editor of the original Star Wars, that's quite something. For what it's worth, Lucasfilm appears to have taken these criticisms on board while too much fan service proved to be a bad thing in The Rise of Skywalker, it's hard to fault what we've seen on the small screen in The Mandalorian and Clone Wars, that's for sure. The former even appears to be explaining some of the mystery behind Supreme Leader Snoke's creation, though there are still plenty of unanswered questions that have yet to be addressed. How do you feel the Star Wars sequel trilogy failed? <laughs> Shots fired by Marcia Lucas. Uh, I'm going to keep this short. Like I said, um, being 100% honest, you guys know my honest opinion. I have a love-hate relationship with the sequel trilogy. I love aspects of it, but at the same time, there's a lot of it I just didn't really like. That really didn't set well with me. I'm an OG trilogy fan. I'm a prequel trilogy fan. I love Clone Wars. I love Star Wars Rebels. I love The Mandalorian and The Resistance. Uh, I can't say that I don't agree with some of the things she said. I think like this is just coming from the fact that you know these are obviously you know the people that were there from day one of George. This is. You know, people who work in the original trilogy, maybe in a little bit of the prequel, but these are like George's people. Especially this is his ex-wife who really knew him, especially at that time when he was going through and you know what he wanted to do with those movies and how he wanted the story to progress. George had always said that this was supposed to be a nine movie arc. And we all knew like after um, George sold Disney George sold Star Wars to Disney that things were going to change and I'm pretty sure obviously he didn't 
you know, he didn't think that they were going to change this much, but, uh, it, it, it it's kind of sad to see, like, you know, people that worked on the original movies just distaste and disdain for, like, all these newer movies, um, because obviously they, like, lived through and saw George's vision when he wanted, and this is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of hard. Now, do I agree upon what she said? Uh, pretty much, yes. Uh, not overly blatantly like that. Uh, there are some aspects, honestly, I do really like about those movies, but there are a lot, you know, that they just didn't get. It didn't, you know, match up with, uh, with the originals or what even the prequels, what George's vision was. But then again, like they said, like Marsha said, these are people who just don't understand Star Wars, they don't understand the story, they don't understand the Skywalkers, they don't understand, you know, Jedi, the story of the Jedi, it's, you know, um, even from, like, this book, how that, like, all the, they just feel like regular summer blockbuster movies that just throw CGI in your face. Now, I mean, to an extent, that's pretty true. Um, I just feel like if they had just made George's episode 7, his story started with what he wrote, and, you know, he literally left them, like, you know, the story, like, here, selling it to you, make this movie, and do what you want after that, I feel like if they had gone that route, they probably would have been in better shape than they are now, and we would have got a drastically, maybe slightly drastically different, uh, sequel trilogy, you know, at the end of the day, um, they just pushed him out, the execs, Kathleen Kennedy, everybody just pushed him out, and, you know, that just makes me sad, because, uh, you know, he sold it to Disney, he's still supposed to have some kind of input, because at the end of the day, he's the creator, you know, you still have the guy who, you know, dreamt up this whole universe, and is still around to give, you know, direction, and, you know, his thoughts and insights, you know, and the, as Captain Kennedy once said, the little Yoda, who they can go and ask for advice, and they just never used it. It's apparent with the sequel trilogy, but at the same time, um, you have the spinoffs, you have uh, Rogue One, you have Solo, and Gareth Edwards, you know, basically had George Lucas on set, like, teach me, like, I want to know how do you make a Star Wars movie? The whole debacle with Solo and those directors getting fired and then they're bringing Ron Howard in, who's actually one of George's really good friends. The same thing, George came on set and it's like, you know, hey George, so how do you make a Star Wars movie? This, this, and this. Same thing with Mandalorian, John Favreau and, you know, Dave Filoni brought him on set. It, it's like you have him there use him as an asset he is the best thing the best person you can have on a star wars set if, even if you don't have him in the director's chair it's good to just have him there you have his advice you have his input if you're a director or producer or anything in, in lucasfilm and you have george on set and he gives you a stamp of approval that should be the final say is the maker happy with this is he happy with what I'm doing with his story? And I don't feel like they did that. Like, nobody... George was never on set for episode 7, 8, or 9. I remember specifically, I went to um, the Force Awakens premiere. And when he finally yeah, came out, he just Skywalker. had a little sour look on his face. And, uh, just like... He wanted to just his girl say girl. something. Uh, you know, I don't know. Whatever. But you know, you just knew he wasn't happy. And then there was no real interview about it. He just was tight lipped and say anything. And like I said, as nothing negative, if you go watch and really like the sequel trilogy, like, you know, more power to you. You know, it's just, I, I don't know, I just feel that a certain way. I feel like really weird the fact that you know, the man who created this just doesn't like these movies. And then his ex wife was basically a really extension of. You know, George from that time really hates these movies. But then again, she really also didn't like it. Uh, episode one, two, but you know, I love those movies. It's just I think it was just too different for her. But uh, this comes from the uh, the uh, biography from Marcus Angian. Uh, guys, go buy that book. Uh, I I just bought it myself, so I've been like going through it. Uh, 
it's actually a really, really good book. It's, it, it, it details a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I didn't even really think about. About, like, you know, making an original trilogy. But anyway, guys, uh, let me know any thoughts um, in the comments down below. What you think? What do you think about what she said? you think she's like, really right and really true? Um, for all the people who really, really love the sequels, what did you think about what she said? And this is coming from, like, one of the original Star Wars creators. Basically, the woman who, like, you know, edited the original three films. Let me know in thoughts in the comments down below. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Um, and if you're not already, please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell, the notification for all my latest videos. That'd be great. Anyway, guys, uh... Thanks for watching this one. May the force be with you. Bye. It's ironic. You can save others from